Before I jump into the teardown of the bumper, I do want to make some notes here as this particular bumper that you see in this picture is the plastic bumper that is the base bumper. There are several variations of this bumper that are available from Jeep and they all will have some similarities on how they come apart. The detailed components of actually tearing apart the innards of this to remove the fog lights and such is unique to the plastic bumper. The Mopar metal bumper or the upgraded components will be a little bit different. I haven't seen a whole lot out there on the full teardown of the plastic bumper, so I'm going to spend some time going to that detail. Again, this is going to be good to get a frame of reference of how stuff mounts to the frame, but it will differ based upon your actual bumper that you selected based upon the trim level of your Jeep. First thing we need to do is locate the bumper filler panel and get those retainers out. Here you're going to see the two on the top, and if you're not familiar with these, these basically have an inset component here that we're going to use a flat blade screwdriver to get to and then pull up the bottom to completely remove it. We're going to repeat this for all the retainers and then gently remove this from behind the bumper so that we can have access to the main bolts. Before we get to those bolts, we do have to take this harness apart here, and you'll see you'll just pull this off the frame and then pinch it and pull it apart and just let it set to the side. We'll get to this later. Now we've got this air dam with two bolts on the bottom and all of these bolts across the top edge. Just make sure you get all of them so we can move on to dropping the air dam and then getting the main mounting bolts for the bumper off. Here you'll see the two on the outside. There's two on the inside of the frame rail and there's two more as you can see here that pass through the frame rail from the bracket. Once we get all of those bolts out, those brackets out of the way, we can grab onto that bumper with the air dam assembly attached and remove that from the front of the vehicle. Here we see the front frame and you can see the flat panels in the front have all eight bolts removed that hold the frame to the bumper. And then there's the four bolts, two per frame rail that come apart on those brackets. Now back to that bumper that we do have to disassemble here. There's a ton of retainers and nuts and bolts. You're gonna watch me go quickly through all of them here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. You can follow along, but there are a ton of retainers. You'll find the plastic type, you'll find the push through type and a whole lot of screws and bolts. So get through this process, just watch what I'm doing. There is one section here you'll see that does have one little tricky spot, but other than that, you're gonna find out that there's just a lot of disassembly. And this is probably why I couldn't find another video that went into such detail. So I am spending the time so you have an idea of what to expect. And when you're down to this part, just how much time you have to allot. This is a little bit of a time suck, but we do need to get everything out of this bumper so that we can attach the factory fog lights, whether they be LED or the standard incandescence. Well, this whole time I've been tearing apart the bumper, you're probably thinking, wow, we're almost there. Well. We've got fog lights to pull out, but there's yet again, probably another dozen more screws and even more so another layer to dig through to get that wire harness out. So again, watch me go through a bunch of screws coming out of the two pieces and this will finally expose the last layer and there's the outer shell and the inner component where we're gonna have to clip out that wire harness. So these pieces will not be reused in the AEV bumper. So we just need to get all of those retainers off the main wire harness, pull the harness off and basically transfer this to the front of the vehicle and plug into that main harness. We're not going to worry too much about placement just yet, but we do want to make sure that the harness is in the appropriate place so that when we get the winch mount in and all the other accessories, we're not forgetting to put this in or leaving the proper space for the wire harness so it doesn't get damaged in the process. So now let's take a quick break and take a look at what AEV puts in the box when you get their RX bumper. So what you see here is for the stubby bumper and they do make the EX, which gives you full width protection, which has different ears at the outside that go all the way out to the edge of the fenders. Now in either case the bumpers all have the same construction so you're getting that hot stamp boron steel which is lighter, thinner, and provides greater strength than the mild steel equivalent. That material is also used on the skid plate, which is a dramatic improvement over the plastic air dam that the factory provides. The AEV skid plate is not interchangeable with the factory plastic, so this does have to be used with one of their bumpers, but inherently provides better front angle of approach, as well as housing a nice protected place for a forward facing light. On top of all that, you get the addition of a winch mount should you desire to put the front bumper mount winch. The great part about AEV is you can count on the fact that this is load engineered to make sure that this is the proper place to put a winch to be pulling on the front of your Jeep. I did select a few more of the other features and options you can put on the front bumper, one of which is the AEV 7000 series LED offered lights. I am going to be talking about these in a completely separate video, but there are some features that do need to be installed in a certain order, so I'm going to cover everything in this video. 
The next thing you're going to see is going to be the front trail cam mount and relocate. Now you do have to pull the front grill off and that is literally impossible with the bumper installed. So I would say for anybody looking to change the front grill of their vehicle to do that before you get to this stage and or make sure that if you're going to do the front trail cam that you do so before putting any of the other features on that you see following this installation on this video. So what we're looking at here is the inside of the driver's side fender wheel pulled up so that you can see the wire harness for the camera, which I've already disconnected, and the hose, which goes to the sprayer on the factory trail cam. And that is the rubber piece that's hanging down on the bottom of the screen that has a clamp on it to make sure that it doesn't completely drain out. Once I've got that set aside, I need to get the grill off. And if you have a factory grill, it comes off the same way. There's six retainers across the top. We'll pull those and pull the two pops at the bottom. And the only difference between the Anderson Composites grill and the factory grill is that I've already removed all the hardware. In this case, you can see the camera's still intact and the wire harness is still in place. And what we're gonna have to do for this is actually pull this entire harness out and then reroute it because the camera's new location no longer passes through the grill. Next, we're gonna have to salvage some of these parts. Here, you're gonna see the main hose and you're gonna wanna pay attention to that one-way check valve and its orientation. We're gonna have to take this out and reuse this in the AEV squirter that's going into the relocated position. Here's that housing and you can see the squirter goes into the lower square position and the camera goes into the upper round. Once we have that camera out, we wanna make sure that it fits in the orientation as shown where the main plug is off to the right. We wanna make sure that we kept those three screws because we're gonna use those right now so that we can mount the camera into the new housing. We're gonna reinsert the stock nozzle, making sure that the direction of the spray is gonna to be towards the camera lens. And then we're gonna use four inches of that material that's provided by AEV to extend the hose to that factory check valve. So again, here we just wanna make sure that we get the hose inserted completely into the nozzle. You might need to use some needle nose pliers to do that, but we also wanna make sure that the check valve is facing the right direction. Now we're ready to put the grill back and we're not gonna be putting any of those wires behind the grill as these are gonna pass in front. So let's get that grill kind of snap back into place, put all of our retainers across the top, making sure that everything is seated appropriately around the headlights. Now we can go ahead and reuse that factory harness that we pulled out for the factory camera. We're gonna plug that in, and as you can see, I've already got my rubber hose extension plugged in, and I'm just gonna leave that at a longer length, dangling here over the tire until we're ready to go to the front bumper hoop. Now we're ready to reinstall the factory headlights and depending upon whether you have an LED, an incandescent, what bumper you have, there's a number of different steps so follow along in the instruction book. Here we're putting on the U-nuts and getting all of the mounting hardware ready so that we can put the factory LED, which was in the plastic bumper, on the AEV bumper. One of the things you do want to pay attention to is making sure you don't damage that lens. Here we recommend that you put some blue tape or any kind of quick removable tape on the lens so that when you push it into the metal bumper, you're not scratching any of that plastic as it's going through. And with only a couple more screws, we'll have both of the factory LEDs mounted into the AEV bumper. Here we've got a couple more screws that got to come off before we can get the AEV tow loops inserted. And those start off with having a long bolt and washer on one side, a spacer, and then this long bolt passes through both sides of the internal frame. Here we have to put these two sleeves in so that we don't crush the frame when we tighten it. And here's a good look at what everything looks like when we're ready to put all the parts back together. But remember, we're gonna put this flange nut on the outside, but we're only gonna get snug as we do have to do some other things before we tighten that up. And now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those factory tow hook support brackets on the inside of the frame rails only. Now, the reason why we're saying this is only going snug is that we're gonna have to use this to hold a bracket in position and it'll be removed later in a another step to make sure that we can get the final assembly done in the correct order. Now the next steps here are optional. This is if you're going to do the installation on the winch mount, which you are gonna see me do. And this will require that we install a few rib nuts into specific holes, depending upon the bumper configuration that you have. So here you'll see the one that I'm doing. This is for the plastic bumper and what the rib nut should look like on both sides. Here's the winch mount plate. And you're gonna find that this has some variation it has to make up for on the vehicles. The purpose of us putting those loosely mounted internal hook braces on there is to figure out just how tight this installation is going to be. As you can see, I could not get everything into quite the same spot. So here I'm gonna pull it out so you can see that the spacing is just inadequate. It's off by as much as about 3 16 of an inch. Now the easiest way to make room for this is to use a ball peen hammer or a small sledge. And as you can see, there's a standoff where the mounting happens for this. And all we're trying to do is work it down that small amount to make sure that we can get those two braces in there along with the winch mount plate. 
Here you can see dropping it in place. I'm still gonna have to use the dead blow hammer to get everything situated in just the right spot. Again, we want this to be very tight. It doesn't have to be a loose fit. So I found that basically using that dead blow hammer and working it down at an angle will get the bracket in place without doing any more adjusting to those standoffs on either side. Now we can put those bolts in. They should go in by hand and we can now focus on installing the winch support brackets with those riv nuts that we've just installed from the bottom. Here we're gonna have to remove that flange nut. Again, that's why we said we don't wanna get anything too tight and we're gonna place those winch support brackets on the bottom in those newly installed riv nuts. Now here we're gonna put bolts on and we're gonna take them right off in the next step and that's all because there's a ton of options here. So make adjustments, leave everything loose. Now we're gonna look at putting in that skid plate bracket and that's gonna require that we insert that between the two. That's taking the bolts out we just placed in for the winch mount and then passing them through that winch mount bracket first and then the skid plate bracket second. It's important we do it in that order. If we're installing the AEV skid plate light bar kit, we do have to install those brackets now. These go into the furthest hole back, and before we put the winch in, we're gonna wanna make sure that we get that rear one set on both sides and get the front bolt and nut in place as well. Now, I'm not gonna go into too many details about the particular winch and my installation, but the things you do need to pay attention to is whichever winch you have, you wanna make sure that there's adequate clearance, you wanna make sure you have good routing for your wires, and then when you start putting the bolts into the bottom of the winch, making sure that the bolts go all the way through and you have enough threads in them, and just making sure that the safety component of mounting this particular device is correct. So here you go, here's our four bolts into the bottom of the winch plate, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Here we can go ahead and put on our choice LED light bar in this particular installation. I am working with a Baja Designs S820 inch light bar and there are a number of different light bars that can fit in here and that's why these brackets are fairly adjustable. When you are using this one, which is the recommended part with AEV, you are going to be pushing this into the furthest back position with the lights aimed level and forward. So here we are in very close proximity to where the detachable sway bar is. So we want to pay attention to where that is before we move on to tightening everything up. Here we have those two bolts that we temporarily installed. Those are coming out so we can get the front bumper fitted. And as you can see here, we want to make sure that if there's any wiring that you haven't completed, that everything is out of the way, or at least consider the fact that if you do have anything that's still not ready to be installed in its final position, that it is something that you can push into its final position once the bumper is installed. We're going to be working in very tight conditions, and here you're going to see me use a technique that we're going to use throughout the rest of the installation, which is going to be using a magnet to hold the nut behind as you're threading the bolt through the hole and into the back of the nut. If you notice here, the two bottom ones, specifically under these brackets here, are a button head style, and that's because these are for better clearance when you're using a high lift jack. This particular bumper has an accommodation for the special area to interface a high lift jack. Now, we're gonna move on to installing the closeout stampings to the main weldment, and this is for the bottom of the hoop bar, so that we can get these placed enough where we can do some of the wiring. In order to do that, we're gonna put an eight millimeter in the back here and just hold those in place enough that we can see where the wire has to run so it doesn't get pinched. And that's what we're gonna be working on next, which is wires for the 7000 series LED lights from AEV. And we also have our trail cam, which has wiring and we have our hose for the washer. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything kind of set up here so we can get those cables we've installed already, feed those through the edge of the bumper and get those fed through the closeout so that they don't damage the wires as we pass them through to their final mounting location. One of the cool parts about AEV's hoop design is it is a two-piece design, which means all the structures behind, we can do all of our mounting, organize our wires, and the cover goes over the top. AEV provides zip ties that mount specifically to the structure so that you can keep everything neatly tucked when it comes time to put the cover on. What I've done is taken the harness for the camera and wired that through the driver's side. I've also fed through the hose for the sprayer. I'm gonna leave both of those two items on the driver's side, and I'm gonna take both of these 7000 series lights and run their harnesses from the passenger side. This will keep everything nice and balanced inside and not bulk up wire on any given side. Now we'll move on to the mounting system. AEV uses the same for their 7000 series light as we will be using for the trail cam. And as you can see, it's a simple installation here. There's basically a bolt that goes through with the spacer. And the great part is the nut is actually welded to the inside of the hoop. Moving on to the trail cam, we have to go ahead and plug in that hose that connects the sprayer. We wanna get that routed along the top well, and then we wanna go ahead and plug in that camera and start putting in the four bolts that hold it into its final place. 
Again, with all of this, we're going in loose. We're gonna tighten all this up once we do find the final positioning right. We're gonna to wanna to aim everything. And then we're gonna start organizing the wires to make sure that the hoop cover goes on without pinching anything inside. Now we're ready to run the cable to the driver's side light assembly and we're gonna poke that through the hole and get everything run through our zip ties, plug that into the back of the light. And we're only gonna install the bolts here loosely so that we can do any aiming we have to do after the fact. And now we can go ahead and pull the excess of that cable through, get the zip ties pulled tight for the driver's side, and then run the wire for the passenger side light through the back hole of the hoop. Once that's done, we can plug that in, get the two bolts, nuts and washers set up, and again, just finger tight so that we can get the cable in the back pulled through so that it's just taut, enough to make sure we can plug in the light, but tight inside the hoop so we don't have any excess sticking out. Now we're ready to get the hoop cover out there. We've got four studs we have to thread into it, and we have four 10 millimeter nuts on the backside. Be sure that when you get this on there and you tighten it, that you're not over tightening this. You can very easily either break the stud or cause the material to pull out of the back of the hoop cover. Once that's done, we wanna get any of our excess tape that we put on to protect the fog lights off, as once we get the covers on this, it'll be much more difficult to get around. So get that protective tape off, and now we're ready to grab the bumper assembly and put the front cover on. The center section goes over most of the hardware that we've already installed, and it also goes over the edges of the closeout stampings. Once that's in there, we do need to start lining up some holes. I started off with the top ones here, and then once I've got those in place, I was able to kind of manipulate and orient everything to make sure all of the holes lined up. Now I do have to put this brace support bolt back in. This is something that will help line up the front holes. So you're gonna see I put those bolts through the front of the bumper, and I'm gonna lock this in place by tightening it up at least snug so that I can make sure those holes are lined up in the front. You may find out that you'll have to take a remote reservoir off if you have the 8100s to get enough clearance to rotate the hook assembly up. Now we can lock in that inner bracket and once that bracket is locked in and our holes are lined up, we can go back here and take that bolt out. This bolt will be removed so that we can rotate that hook assembly up into its final position and put the spacer behind it. So now we're ready to go ahead and install our corners. Again, this is the RX stubby bumper, so we have the short one here, and this will go over the top of everything that we've installed so far. So this goes over the center section, as well as going over the closeouts on the very top of the hoop. Now we're ready to swing up that tow hook assembly, and when we're doing that, we're gonna have to make sure we get the nut behind all of the parts in this assembly. It's a little tight back there. I used the magnet to hold the nut. I started it by hand, and now I can get a wrench back there and apply enough torque to lock in that hook assembly, and we're gonna have to repeat this on both sides. So here we're getting ready to do the final assembly on all the parts, and that means that we have to get this spacer in. Now I have taken a picture of this from an early stage where you can see the different layers. So we've got the frame rail, we've got the bumper support, we've got the washer that AEV provides, and then the tow hook is still rotated forward, but the final assembly should look like this, where you have the frame rail, you have the bumper support, you have the new spacer we've just inserted, we have the tow hook assembly that we've had rotated, and we have the new longer bolt and washer that's been provided by AEV, which will give this entire assembly the proper structure it needs to be the recovery area it was designed to be. The RX corners only need a few more bolts to be finished out, and once that's done, all we have to do is install the fog light bezels and a few screws to get the bumper assembly for the most part done. Most builds option for the skid plate, and I did as well, so here you're gonna see that the skid plate goes in it does tie into not only the bumper assembly but the tow hook assembly and then those two brackets we installed in a previous step so here's our final product we've been working towards this throughout this entire video you can see that high tuck stubby bumper definitely provides a aggressive look but not only that still provides you with a great mounting system for that trail cam relocate the 7000 series lights, which are definitely going to light up anywhere I go, the ability to use that Warren winch, and all of that packaged in a way that gives you better angle of approach than even the factory Mopar bumper. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. If you followed along to the video and you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And if I don't see you watching my next video, hopefully I'll see you out on the trail.